I thought quite a bit about uh, when you had asked me about this. And the first thing I did was look up the word epiphany. <laughs> I thought about an epiphany as, as something that you're walking around a corner and, and suddenly an event takes place that changes your life. Consequently, it changes the lives of many others because, you know, we are all connected. And that moment for me happened to take place um, in, in Breckenridge, Colorado, almost 25 years ago. Um, I have a goddaughter uh, who was diagnosed with cancer at age 12, and very close to her and to her parents, whom I knew in college. She was invited on a ski trip with a group of kids, all of whom had cancer. And it was an organization that was about three years old, old at the time. And uh, she went on this ski trip. And it completely changed her approach to her, to her, her disease. And because for the first time, she was around a lot of other kids who were just like her. Nobody cared about whether you were bald or not. Nobody cared about scars or amputations or central lines. And, 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 and they were able to share a lot of stories and uh, common experience. And they were all dealing with the same fear and dealing with the, the, same, the same thing. Um, when she talked to me about it, she was so excited. And, and, and uh, we talked after she came back. And then she later sent me a video, and I, I never, I never really got around to seeing it. There, I watched it maybe for a second. I, I don't remember. Then that summer, they had another trip, but this was a family trip. And again, it was families of kids from all over the country, and they met there in Breckenridge for, um, for this, uh, to for a week's activities. She called me and wanted me to come up. And at the time, I was doing. Uh, I'm an actor by profession, and. And at the time, I was doing a series of movies that were enormously popular with teenagers called Police Academy. And I had done a couple of other really light, silly movies that, that kids had liked. And she wanted me to come up. I, I was her, her B movie star, quasi-celebrity uh, godfather. And I said, no, I couldn't come. I, I, was, I was busy, and I, you know, I, was, I, was, I just couldn't come. And she kept on and on, and I, and I said, sweetheart, I just cannot come. I, I, you know, I've got this to do, I've got that to do, uh, you know. I'll make it up to you, but I, I just, I can't come right now. So she hung up, and about five minutes later, she called back, and she said, you're my godfather, and I want you here. <laughs> I said, uh, I won't repeat what I said to her, <laughs> but I called her manipulative to say the least. And I said, you realize I, I'm going to come for a day. I'll come for a day. I have to fly to Denver. I have to get a car. I have to drive up to Breckenridge. And I'll be there that night. Then I have to leave the next morning. And I said, you realize it's going to cost me about $1,500 just to come up there. And she said, absolutely true. She said, whatever. <laughs> I said, all right. So. I begrudgingly, but I loved her and couldn't deny her anything, uh, I, I flew to Denver and I drove up to Breckenridge. The schedule, she had told me they would be at the uh, volunteer fire department and they, uh, they had an activity there for the kids and they were having, you know, a uh, battle with uh, the, the water hoses and the kids would all be dressed up in, uh, you know, in the fireman outfits and hats and all that stuff. So I got there, and I found it, small town, and I, I found the, the fire, fire department and uh, parked. And I walked in, and it was a big open space where the trucks normally would be. They'd set up, uh, you know, they'd set up uh, lunch and uh, food everywhere, and sweets. And, and you could hear all the commotion was outside. Um, so I walked toward the back. There were a few people standing there. Then I, I walked out the door, and literally, as I was referring to earlier, around a corner. And uh, what I saw forever uh, changed my life. Um, I, had seen <clears throat> I had seen one kid with cancer, 
I had seen a couple of kids with cancer, you know. I had never seen 30 kids with cancer, all in the same place and all laughing and, you know, having this exuberant celebration uh, of their lives. Um, I went back out to my rental car and uh, I sat in it 10 or 15 minutes, I guess, and I, I cried. Uh, I cried for her, I cried for all of them. Um, and then I went back in, and, uh, and that's 24 years ago. And uh, I, uh, I started as a volunteer with the organization. I am now executive director of the foundation. We had two paid staff members, we now have 12. Um, we impacted maybe 40, 50 kids a year. We now impact hundreds. Actually, th thousands when you consider we have many events, local and regional events, that include siblings and family members. So exponentially, it, it changed my life. <clears throat> it changed my family's life. Uh, um, I have many friends that have worked as hard, if not harder, than I have uh, over, over these past uh, 25 years, um, they have changed so many lives, touched so many lives of kids. And, uh, and for me, it started when I turned that corner. You know, moved around, just stepped outside, took a right, and there it was. And if, you, if there's anything you learn in all of this is that uh, um, it, life goes on. It has to go on. And you just have to celebrate, celebrate life while you're here and celebrate those kids. I mean, that, that's the, that, the, the, if we have a theme, one human being's experience can have such an impact on, on so many people. And it's not that they're trying to have an impact. It's not that that's, you know, it's not that, uh, you know, this is, I'm not talking about the, you know, Paul on the road to Damascus and, and, and the angel comes to visit him and then he feels compelled to change the world. Uh, uh, not at all. It, it, it's just that it's that when one life changes, it changes many lives. It just does because all of those relationships uh, are changed.